Hey guys, today we're out at a relatively remote, somewhat secluded location because reaching some point like this is exactly the, the point of this kit to be able to reach some place like this relatively safely and unscathed, uh, hopefully. But um, because this kit, as the title says, it's a uh, it's a contingency kit for dealing with civil unrest um, as best we can and this one is mine based on my experiences and my area but the whole idea is to give you food for thought on how you might build your own based on your circumstances and your experiences and that sort of thing so stick around and uh, we're going to go into some of the things that I've got in this kit and why they're there and maybe some of the experiences that led me to put them there. So hold on a minute. Okay, firstly, I've designed this kit to be relatively small. It's you know, not anything too heavy because the most important element of it, as far as I'm concerned, is uh, to be able to carry it. Uh, you want to put together a kit that doesn't impede you much from being able to achieve and sustain your you know, maximum speed that you can reach and, and maintain on a normal basis to uh, E and E out of an area. And so if you make it so heavy you can't move with it, then it's pointless. Or if you make the items and it's so heavy you can't carry it or move it, then you're just making things harder on yourself. And further exacerbating an already deteriorated circumstance. Now, on this one, this one is compartmentalized and has two main compartments and then it has two smaller compartments. And the way I've designed this is because I, I want things here that's easy access on the top of this, top of this, here, and here, because the nature of things when you need something under these circumstances, such as light or first aid, self-defense, tools for cutting, then they tend to be needed quickly. Um, it's Civil unrest can create some violent upheavals in society and things can get pretty crazy pretty quickly. So the point of this is to be able to get out of the way. Hopefully you can get out of the way in your vehicle and you can carry all this out somewhere else. But that isn't always the case. Sometimes vehicles have to be left behind and, and we E&E &E on foot. And so what I've got in here, as you can see, is I've got light. And I've got a multi-tool and a lot of times I've got let's see, yeah yeah there it is cutting tools have a tendency to be needed fast if they're needed at all and so you want something that's durable that's tough that's reliable and quickly deployable even if you're wearing gloves because the gloves are in here as well because in deteriorated urban environments uh, there are a lot of sharp objects glass steel concrete rocks you name it um, when things start being burned or exploded it can get pretty nasty pretty fast so there's that but also there's things like critical infrastructure to your functionality like if you wear glasses and you need them to be able to identify threats and be able to identify where you're trying to go then picking up a you know, cheap pair of 
drugstore glasses and a, and a hard case. I, I like the hard case because that protects them. But in my case, I am farsighted. So I can see fine when I'm driving. What I can't see well is when I'm trying to get splinters out of my hands or if I'm trying to read tiny font. So I tend to keep an extra pair of reading glasses around just in case I need to read my maps. And we'll, we'll go into the maps later because they're definitely a thing. Um, you know, the phone is great. I'm actually shooting this video with my phone right now. They're wonderful tools when everything about them is working properly. But if the uh, cellular phone infrastructure gets damaged and you can no longer pull up Google Maps and you're unfamiliar with the area as far as knowing names and turns without it, then having hard copy maps to be able to navigate your way to safety is very helpful. So I've got a folder where I have actually taken screenshots of my routes and my city and I've had them printed off so that I can actually have a physical copy of what I'm where I'm going to try to go that shows the roads and it shows the railroad tracks and it shows you know different things that I can use for alternative routes to avoid the worst of the unrest. Second. This part of the kit here is dedicated to first aid and contingency. You've seen these kits in a previous video and tourniquets. Um, I was, I think I'm the only one that shows up to work every day carrying a tourniquet. This is a, a cat tourniquet. Uh, there's different types on the market. This one was gifted to me by a friend in the army and I trust his opinion on him. So I've been carrying it. I, I know how to improvise a tourniquet. But having one pre-made is, is going to be good if it's times of unrest. I don't think I have to open these kits here, I'll, although I can go into them again later. Um, you've seen them. There's a previous video. They're still filled exactly like they were with battery chargers and first aid equipment and multi-tools and light small multi-tools. Because the whole point of these is if I can't carry everything else, these go into pockets as much as possible of this kit. That's why it's designed to be modular. Everything about it is designed to be taken out of this bag if necessary and put on my person, even if I have to change into the clothes that are in here, which is why they're there, which is a pair of cargo pants, so more pockets, and dark leather clothing to help just kind of disappear and not be a target if I need to. So that's the overall of this kit. And in the next segment that I get to, when I get to move things around, I will break down some of the pieces of equipment that are down further in to, you know, the kit. And, and there's actually one more that I want to try to move up here. And you'll see why when I get to it. I just picked it up over the last couple of days, so it's going to get relocated to a different area of this kit. Maybe the top of this kit is definitely going to be in the top of one of them, and that's eye protection. And the reason for this is the same. Like eyes and fingers, eyes and hands, are statistically the most injured parts of the human body when it comes to this type of environment where cars are being burned or buildings are being burned and glass is being smashed and you know Molotov cocktails are being thrown so you're going to have eye injuries, hand injuries and burns are things that have to be taken into consideration as the top of the list so we're going to go into the things that I've put together for that I'm just going to relocate this and put some other things uh, on the trunk here and have more discussion in just a second. The reason I'm out at the relo a remote location to film this is because if I were to try to film it for the environment that it's put together for, I would spend the entire time I was filming trying to explain what I was doing or trying to keep from 
having trouble out of some of the people in the environment. But let's go into this part first. First things first, eye protection. Without your eyes, um, everything else becomes almost a moot point. So these are something that I've recently added. I'm not sure how I'm going to put them in the kit. There's room. I just, I'm not sure how I'm going to seal them up. I'm probably going to wrap them in the same foam and tissue they come in and then put them in a plastic bag or leave them in this box and tape it shut. I wanted them to protect it. I normally have safety glasses in my kits, two pairs in this kit, in the same hard container. And that's because I've got a standard pair of amber lenses. One of the things I've learned from years in the construction industry, amber lenses work great in low light environments. But then I've also got some more covert safety glasses. Like I wore when I was doing construction work and landscaping where they don't look so much like safety glasses, but they are, you know, National Safety Institute rated for safety and impact. And that will help avoid getting things in your eyes. The, the goggles are better because they seal around your face and things can't come behind the glasses. Where the mirrors come in is if you're alone, trying to get something out of your eyes is difficult. But... You know, if you have the mirror, you can kind of see what's going on. I use my mirrored sighting compasses more for getting things out of my eyes when I'm in the field than I do for shooting an azimuth. And then, you know, standard first aid, you got, I've got the new skin. Burns. Burns are a big thing. Um, so I got burn bandages and burn spray because you don't want to touch it. I've got the bleed stop because um, sometimes you just got to stop the bleeding and go. And then I've got friends that are on blood thinners, so I like to have this stuff around. The tourniquet, that's definitely worst case if you're using a tourniquet, um, trying to move someone or yourself while you're needing a tourniquet to stop the bleeding. It's going to be more difficult, obviously, so the goal is to avoid that. That's one of the things. But some of this is more about mitigation the water. I like the smart water bottles because the spouts on them make them great for using them to irrigate wounds and irrigate eyes if there's dust or you know tear gas or whatever in your eyes the water can the the stream of water can help rinse and you know multi tools are great for being able to grab things to that are sharp or hot so the multi-tool comes in handy. I always have one of those. I have multiples. There's a little one in this kit. And the way these are designed, you're going to see a lot of redundant systems because uh, depending on how much of this I'm able to get in my pockets, I want to have certain things be redundant. Light is one. You'll see there's light in every kit, a way to start fire in every kit. There's a knife or cutting tool in every kit. And then there's the primary things for that kit. Um, this one being first aid and this one just being contingency. Cold weather. Cold weather injury, injuries are insidious. Uh, about the time you quit hurting and you think things are great, that's when you've really sustained the damage. So there's always, as you can see, multiple ways for me to get warm. Warm up my feet, warm up my hands, my fingers, different extremities. And I don't like these little kits personally. Some people love them. I feel like they're, they give a false sense of security. I mean, some of the items in them are great, but there's really not a lot there. But seeing them on the shelf, people say, oh, it's a survival kit. I just grabbed this. And then there's a lot of things that they wish they had that aren't in this. And then there's a lot of things in this that they don't really need at the time. Although I like the duct tape. I carry my own with the rip spools. I've got a few of those. Those come in handy. And cordage if you need to be able to tie something up um in nature cordage is difficult uh, durable cordage is difficult to find and time consuming to make and i prefer the you know like the paracord bracelets to be separate i don't like consumable infrastructure i don't like paracord watch bands for instance because once you need to use the cord then the, the watch has to be stored some other way and I'm just not a fan of that. 
but that's a lot of what's going on in this kit and I'm going to relocate some of this, relocate me, and we'll go more into how this stuff helps and how to carry it and how my game plan is to be able to break it down if I need to, how I'm going to prioritize what I'm going to take if I have to leave some of this behind or if I have to cash some of it, which is the reason behind using the black pack is that it disappears in shadows so if I have to cache some of my equipment and come back to it at a later point I want to be able to hide it and in a place where it's least likely to be seen